Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I'm going to show you how to create multicolor prints from already existing models. Stick around. Welcome back makers. In front of me you can see two relatively easy to print models. One is the very popular Pegasus by 3D printed Aspie and the other one is a Wreck-It Ralph model from my mini factory created by Eva Vu, if I'm correct. These are awesome models. Uh, the Pegasus is very very easy to print. To some extent it can print without any infill. The Wreck-It Ralph is a bit more complicated because it has some severe overhangs. However, they are two very nice models and I felt that these two models would be ideal for me to show you guys how you can dissect these and print them in multi-color. Now I have access to the Palette Plus at the moment and also the Yossi Prusha multi-material upgrade. The only issue that there is at the moment is the lack of multi-part objects to print so you can print in multi-color. So I thought to myself if I do some research I might find a way to do that myself and show you guys and in fact there is a way and that is through Mesh Mixer. So what I'm going to do is go over to Mesh Mixer and show you how we're going to dissect this Wreck-It Ralph model. Now the first thing you're going to do is open Mesh Mixer which you can download for free and import the model into it. Now the first thing you're going to do is click on select and you see the circle with a shade. Now this is going to highlight an object. So if you left click and drag, you can see that it starts painting it. And we're going to use this to select an area. So we're going to go ahead and start with his left arm. We're just going to draw this out. So now we're relatively close to the edges. Um, and you can do this by being very careful and not go over too much. However, you can also change the size of the circle to shade if you want a bit more detail, like for example, down here. Now, if you do make a mistake like that and you need to go back rather than pressing on Control Z, what you need to do is hold Shift and left click and it starts clearing up the area you just painted over. So we're going to go ahead and do the whole edges. Now as you can see here, everything is fully covered. Now what we're going to do next, once you are sure that it's perfectly fine, we want to smooth out these edges right here. We don't want all these sort of triangles to be all sharp. So we're going to go to modify and we're going to click smooth boundary. And as you can see, it selects a fine line, like a detailed line around where we stopped, which looks okay. And we're going to click accept. And as you can see, it smooths it out. And if you're happy with that, what you do then is go on modify and create phase group. And as you can see there, it has created a phase group just for that arm. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing for the arms and the legs. Now what I did now is just select a smooth boundary. So it should have showed me that blue line around the edges. However, it didn't. And when it does this, it means that I missed a spot. So what I need to do is go through it and you can see it right there. It's this little red dot right here. So we're going to do cancel. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to go back and modify smooth boundaries. And as you can see, now it's all good. It's very important because if, you do, if this doesn't happen straight away, it means you missed a spot. As tiny as it may be, you might have missed a spot. I'm going to click on accept. Once again, create phase group. And we can see that we've created a second phase group. Now we're going to go ahead and do the feet. Okay, so now we have four separate phase groups. Uh, you have the two feet and the two arms. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go click on edit and we're going to generate a complex. We're going to tell Mesh Mixer that 
all these four things should be separate from that. And he's gonna ask us how do we want to separate them? So you can double click on the line and that creates a fill option. So we're gonna double click on it. And what it does is basically cut straight lines from around the arm, just cuts it straight. Um, now this can become a bit complicated going forward. I'll try to get into that a bit later. But as you can see here, it simply just cut off the arm as easily as it could. So in this case, we're gonna do the same for all four limbs. And now it's very important to note that this program is very power hungry. So you need a decent PC with enough RAM and power in order to make sure that it doesn't crash every other action that you do. As you can see, it's starting to slow down right now. Um, but I'll tell you how we can get around that. So first we're gonna go ahead and keep on, well, chopping off these limbs. So now we can see that all four phase groups have been kind of dissected. So we're gonna click on accept. I'm not gonna choose any of these for now because we don't really need them. Um, so I'm gonna ask you to ignore them for now. But if you do this yourself, you can try to experiment. This just simply refines the iterations. This increases the smoothness of these sections over here. But for now, these will do. So we're gonna go click on accept and we're here. Now, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to split complex. So it's basically going to split all four parts that we generated separately. Once that's done, you can see here in the object browser that we have the body, which is untouched. We have what left arm, right arm, right foot, and left foot. So now that we have all parts split, as you can see, what we're going to do is save the progress. So if the computer crashes or the program crashes, you won't lose any unsaved progress. So we're gonna go to export. Actually, first we're gonna go click on this one right here, the main SDL. We're gonna go on export. We're gonna go find the folder. And we're gonna save it as SDL binary sequence, one file per region. So we're gonna name this Ralph arms legs. Now, what we want to do now is import. We're gonna replace and we're gonna take, these are the five files we just saved. Now, as you can see from the size, this is the largest one. So this is the main body. Now that is all we need because we've already sliced or removed all these parts here. So we're just gonna take the main object, open it. And as you can see, Ralph is here without any limbs. It looks a bit creepy, but it will do for now. So let's start by removing part of his shirt first then we'll do the um, overalls and then we'll do the rest slowly. So I've separated that and once again, I'm going to save the progress because it's starting to become a bit intensive now. So I'll probably save the progress with every step that I will do. So once again, I'm gonna to go to export. I'm gonna go find the folder. And this time we're gonna do Rolf, arms, legs, shoulder, STL. We're gonna save, and once that's done, I'm gonna to go to import once again, replace, and once again, we're gonna take the largest file size. So what I'm gonna do now is go through the rest of the sections with the same process. We'll do a part, we'll save it, we'll do another part, save it, and so on and so forth. Now, having done the last part, as you can see here, there is a bit of a conflict. This tends to happen, so it, I still have to find a way around it. But basically what happens is it's trying to cut a straight line from here to here in order to uh, separate the complex. Unfortunately, that part is kind of concave, which means the top part is actually higher 
than part of it. Now you could use the different option. Now, so far we've used the fill option. You could use the offset option and that's by double clicking on the object itself rather than the line. And what happens is it takes kind of like a slice from the whole complex part itself and kind of pushes it in. But as you can see, this does really weird things to it. So you can't always use it. Um, so what we'll do instead is we'll use the fill option and we'll just let the slicer deal with those parts that are kind of overlapping. It should work in this case because it's not too much. Uh, on a larger scale model, it might affect it heavily. However, for this particular exercise, as you can see here, these little two parts, they will have to do. As you can see here, we have those overlapping parts. We're gonna accept it anyway, and we're going to split complex. And now we have the head and the body. So what's left to do is simply export this, and what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into um, Slicer Multi-Material Edition from Prusa and we're going to start importing all the parts so we can slice it and send it off to print. What we're going to do now is start importing the uh, parts of the models that we have managed to dissect. So we're going to take the first part, which is, well, we can just use this one right here, which is kind of like a large part, which is the torso. We're gonna double click on that and we need to load more parts. So we definitely need the face, we need the hair, we need the overalls. We also need the shoulders and the limbs. We're gonna open, we're gonna make sure that all parts are there. So now what we're gonna choose is which extruder is gonna print which part. So we know that the hair is going to be brown, so we'll set brown at one. So is the overalls. We're gonna do pink as number, as extruder number two for the arms and the feet. And we also want pink for the face. Then we're gonna need orange. We'll set in at number three for the body itself. I'm going to click OK and it's here. Now what we want to do is turn it around. So we're going to rotate X axis. We're going to do 90 degrees. Move it slightly to the center. Move the purge block. And now just for us to see how it's going to look, we said we're going to put the brown on the first extruder pink on the second. I don't really have a nice pink here, so I can kind of try and create one. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm gonna click okay. And the red on the third. We're gonna slice now. And once it's done slicing, we're gonna see a preview and see how it looks. And that looks okay. As you can see here, these are the parts which overlapped, which unfortunately in this case, there was really nothing I can do about, but it kind of looks okay overall. So I'm happy with that. And I'm now gonna send it off to the uh, Prusa i3 Mark II S and we'll watch it print.
And this is the result. And I have to say that I am really, really, really happy with the way it turned out. Not only that, I'm really excited that it actually worked because now I can experiment even further, even with multi-material objects. Now, I printed this without supports. I probably should have because it has quite severe overhangs, which look to be about 75, 80 degrees uh, under the arms and under the thumbs. But it kind of looks okay and I'm happy with the result. It wasn't for me to see the quality of the print. It was more to see that it does actually work. So this was an absolute success in my eyes. Now I have also tried Pegasus from 3D printed Aspie. And as you can see, this turned out really good. But the only reason why it turned out really good is because this is scaled up quite heavily. I actually tried to print this in the original scale with the way that I had done it in Mesh Mixer uh, at least about four or five times with the first time was kind of a success, but I really wasn't happy with the way it was printing. First of all, I had an issue with the Prusa because one of the grub screws um, came loose from the extruder. So one of the uh, hob gears just kind of was slipping and therefore one of the pinks uh, the pink filament got, well, got kind of jammed. It stopped extruding altogether at the very top. But the fact that it has very small details kind of lost the quality. And this dissection part right here. Now, this was printed with the uh, Enervision EV160 and the Palette. And the problem with that, it, this is not, the, the reason why this failed wasn't because of the Palette or the printer. It was for two things, the way I had dissected it and also my settings for the extra tool restart distance. And that is when it does a tool change kind of movement, it should re-extrude re some filament and I got those settings wrong. But this should give you a very good idea of what the offset tool in Mesh Mixer does. And as you can see the hair and the eyes, there are only kind of like two two, literally two perimeters, and that is way not enough. All it does is simply pushes the edge of the model inwards by a couple of millimeters, and that is it. There is nothing for the, um, the filament to actually hold on to or enough time for the filament to sort of equalize the pressure in the nozzle and come out quite fine. However, when you scale it up, it works. This is the same exact model, the same mesh mixed model that I did. I just scaled it up by I think about 150%. And this is the result. And I have to say that now this, this looks good. This looks really, really good. So I am extremely happy with it. That is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Now, please bear in mind, this was my first ever time using Mesh Mixer. So I possibly could have done it differently. I'm not entirely sure. I did quite a bit of research, but I, I know there are ways to improve this, which I will find them. I will do more models like this. And I also want to do with multi-material, like kind of like a snake and parts in PLA and parts in TPU so it can bend and flex. If you do have a multi-material capable printer and you try this out, please let me know. Please tag me on Twitter so I can actually see what you have managed to achieve. Now I will upload these models as I mix them onto Thingiverse. So I will leave links in the video description. If you have any questions, which I hope I can answer on Mesh Mixer, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. In the meantime, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please comment, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making guys.